this killer is both lucky and ruthless. She would go on to be accused of being a serial poisoner. Huh? Come on, Charlie. Huh? <laughs> What's the big rush? I'm hot. I'll bet you are. No. Oh. Grace, please. Charlie, stop it. Grace. Grace, I love you. I hate you. <laughs> but you don't hate this. <laughs> More than 12 victims, she attended a convent school for her education. Those who went to school with her described her as immoral, vicious, a thief, and a girl who ran wild with the boys. Marie-Joséphine Philippine Davayod was born to Pierre-Eugène Davayod and Marie-Louise Antigny, with whom she had a close relationship. Now listen to me, young lady, I don't care how stuffy it was. This is your party, these are your guests. You have an obligation to them. You happen to be the hostess. I know that, Mama. Well, then go on in and start acting like one. Great. Is anything wrong? No. In 1920, she married her cousin, Auguste Antigny and their marriage lasted until his death in 1927, attributed to tuberculosis. After the death of her first husband, Marie remarried in 1928 to Léon Besnard, who owned a rope shop in Loudun. Their union seemed prosperous until the Besnard family inherited wealth, leading to a series of suspicious deaths that would forever change Marie's life. Not long after Léon's parents inherited a lot of money, they were invited to come and live with Léon and Marie. Soon after, Leon's father died of poisoning, supposedly from eating the wrong kind of mushrooms. Just three months later, his mother also died, and the cause was given as pneumonia. Well? Still too high, Emily. Well, I'm taking the pills twice a day. The couple ended up subletting some rooms to a couple who were wealthy and without children. The Rives, Toussaint and Blanche were friends of Lyon's. On July 14, 1939, Toussaint died from a pneumonia, and in December of 1941, Blanche died due to aortitis. In their will, Marie was listed as their only heir. Marie was also the named beneficiary of the wills of her cousins Pauline Bodineau and Virginie Lalleron. On July 1, 1945, Pauline, who was 88, apparently mistook a bowl of lethal lye for a bowl of dessert and died. A week later, Virginie allegedly did exactly the same thing and died. Because you won't take my word. Baby, this is not something to argue about. I'm worried, I want to help you. I don't need your help. I didn't do anything wrong and I'm not a baby. Grace, please. Mama, that woman accused me of some terrible things this afternoon, and now she's got you believing them. Well, I won't live in a house where people think that about me, so either you take my word or I'm going to pack and leave right now. I'll take your word for it. Six months later, Marie's mother, Marie-Louise Davayud, also died under mysterious circumstances on January 16th, 1946. At one point, Marie discovered Leon had been having an affair with another woman. Leon claimed to a friend that he thought Marie was poisoning him, saying she had served some soup to him one night, but there was already a liquid in the bowl before she poured the soup. Shortly afterward, on October 25, 1947, Leon was dead. The cause given was uremia. Because of the claims of poisoning Leon had made, the gendarmerie ordered an investigation and an autopsy was conducted. The forensic surgeon found that Leon's body contained 19.45 millalias of arsenic, Marie was promptly arrested, and all other suspicious deaths around her were exhumed and re-examined. This led to Marie being charged with 13 counts of murder. The autopsy reports showed that each victim had been poisoned by arsenic slowly over a period of time. At that time, though, it was difficult to prove this as toxicology was a relatively new science, and Baroud, the forensic surgeon, had difficulty explaining his results and defending them when questioned on the stand by the defense lawyers. For this reason, the first two trials resulted in no conviction. She was placed on trial a third time in 1961. However, the defense was once again successful in undermining the relevance of the arsenic evidence, 
and Marie was acquitted of all of the murders. In today's legal system, Marie would most likely have been convicted based on the autopsy findings. It wasn't to be the case in 1961. It may seem that she shouldn't be considered a serial killer without a conviction, but the evidence suggests otherwise, and therefore she has earned her place. Marie Besnar died in 1980, presumably from natural causes. She remained a free woman until her death. Both of us knew what this was. I couldn't stay away from you. All right, that's my fault. But I've got a husband and a son that I love. Who are you kidding? Who are you kidding? Let go of me.